Hello everybody, welcome to the third session of our OMS Expedition series. I'm Gabriel Taylor from Model Technology Solutions. Today we're going to be talking about the surface map solution within Log Analytics and how we can use it to investigate issues in our environment. So a quick agenda for what this presentation is going to involve, quick talk about what the overall series is and what we're doing in this session. Finally, we're going to talk about what is service map, what does it do, how do we set it up, and how do we actually use it to leverage in our troubleshooting and workflows and processes. Then finally, some wrap up. So a quick talk about the series. The OMS Expedition series is an ongoing series of webinars, recordings, and presentations that we're making built around the Microsoft Operations Management Suite collection of tools. Each session is either a mixture of a high-level overview or a session-based, scenario-based deep dive talking specifically about how this can be used for a particular problem in your environment. The goal of this series is really to show how these solutions work, what benefits they can bring you, and mainly what benefits they can bring you today in your existing data center and processes without having to up, uh, upend your data center and redo all of your infrastructure. Really, we're talking about how this suite of tools can make your life easier today. So what we're talking about in this presentation, again, service map. What is it? What does it do? How do we set it up? How do we leverage it? Now, service map is a very cool tool. We're going to get into it in a moment. You're going to really enjoy it. Let's quick talk about the Operations Management Suite at large. It is a collection of tools from Microsoft that is made to be a hybrid management platform. It's cloud-based services that can be used to manage your infrastructure wherever it's at, whether it's on-prem, in the cloud, somewhere in between, whether it's in Microsoft's cloud or Amazon's cloud or any other location. These tools can be leveraged to centrally manage and uh, take control over your infrastructure. So, service map. To set the stage, let's talk about traditional monitoring inside our environment. Traditionally, we you know, traditionally, commonly today, we have servers, we have applications that span multiple servers. We've got things like Active Directory, which obviously we have multiple domain controllers out there. We have web, web applications where you've got the web front end, application server in the middle, database back end. We've got pieces that span multiple services across perhaps a wholly cloud-based web site to on-prem based resources, but everything's talking together. Everything is working together for the delivery application. The problem is that in additional model, it's tricky to link those together. You've got to leverage a lot of, of tools, you've got to leverage a lot of documentation and tracking. There's no real way to easily quickly see all those links together. What we're talking about is monitoring the whole distributed service, monitoring the entire application and all of its components from one location, and be able to see what is affecting that application. So as the IT world shifts into a more cloud model, we find that there are a lot more components being spread out a lot across a lot more places. This is a little visual example of that, how we're seeing that full end-to-end -end from where the end users are at through the web tier and the apps all the way back to the database back and anything else back there. And what we've been missing in the traditional monitoring environment is really a way to connect the dots, really a way to get from point A to point C and see all the connections in between and see how any problems along the way impact the overall solution. So the surface map solution on log analytics is a way of connecting the dots. It's a way of putting together all the pieces dynamically, letting it automatically discover all the dependencies, what servers are talking to what applications, talking to what websites, etc., over every TCP connected process, seeing what's where they're connected, what ports they're connecting on, what's happening in those, and what the health of those are. It's able to quickly build out maps showing you how all of the different resources in your environment connect, and we can use that as a tool combined with the other alerts, events, et cetera, to really get a piece, get an idea of how any given problem is affecting our environment. So a little bit of backstory on Service Map. If you are someone who's used Operations Manager, you may have heard of uh, Blue Stripe and their Fact Finder solution a couple of years ago. It was an add-on for SCUM, also works standalone, that basically allows you to build distributed applications on the fly by discovering them dynamically and building out all the connections. 
So Microsoft bought them, took the technology, and completely reworked it and integrated it into Log Analytics very deeply so that we can not only get those dynamic maps of the environment, but we can link them to all of that beautiful log data that we're collecting from all of our resources and leveraging that to show us what's happening, to draw insights and give us information we need quickly on how to address shortcomings in our environment, how to find problems in our environment, and how to make our environments more resilient and address issues. Uh, so key use cases for service map include uh, three main areas. Discovery of those connections, building those maps of what's talking to what and what's happening in the environment. Incident management, being able to troubleshoot issues in the environment, be able to say that if somebody's having issues with the website, we can come out, look at the web server and look at the connections and see where that unhealthy link might be, see what, might, what problem might be affecting the overall environment. And also migration assurance. If you want to move applications, move servers, move things around, move app, and you don't know what is talking to what, it's a lot harder to do that. It's a lot less safe because you don't know what might be breaking. Whereas with something like this, we're able to map out those connections in advance. You can see exactly what might be affected by any given change, giving you more power and capability and knowledge that you can use for appropriately planning migrations. So cool things about this, again, this is kind of harping on stuff I've already said. This is going to automatically discover all the connections in real time. You don't have to do anything to get this to work aside from installing the relevant agent and bringing on the solution. You don't have to uh, already know what in your environment is talking to what. That's the beauty of it. If you're in an environment that maybe you've worked for your current company for 18 years, maybe you only started there last week, and there's years of infrastructure there that unfortunately the documentation is lacking or lost and nobody knows what half the servers are being used for anymore. Nobody knows who is in charge of them or anything, what they're being used for, what they're actually doing. And so maybe it's your job to clean things up. Instead of having to spend a lot of time investigating every single server, we can deploy service map and let it do all that work for you. It will dynamically map all the connections. You can just come in here, click the server, and there's everything it's talking to. It makes it much easier to get a handle on your environment, what's happening, when and where, and to understand what your servers are being used for. So some prerequisites for leveraging the solution. This video is being recorded in March 2017. At this point in time, the solution is still in preview in Log Analytics. As a result of that, it's only supported in the East US and West Europe Azure regions. Uh, they're adding more soon. Uh, if you're watching this a few months from now, for all I know, it could be in GA at that point. But if you're wanting to use it right now, the important thing to know is your Log Analytics workspace must be either in the West or East US or West Europe regions. Additionally, this is part of the Insight and Analytics solution offering the whole big shebang, uh, which includes several solutions inside of Log Analytics. In order to leverage it then, we have to be on one of two different pay tiers. You have to either have the OMS tier, which is a pay per node offering. Uh, basically, however many servers you're using this on, you're paying a fixed price for those servers for all of your Log Analytics usage. Um, the other tier is the free tier, which is free to use, free to use on every server you have. However, the caveat is that there is a 500 megabyte per day max data upload on the free tier for Log Analytics. Additionally, for service maps specifically, you can only use five servers max if you're on the free tier. Uh, if you, you can still use as many other servers as you want for the rest of Log Analytics data, but this solution will only work for, five, for the first set of five servers you deploy it on in the free tier. So basic tier is ineligible for service map at this time. And as far as setup goes, in addition to the Log Analytics agent, the Microsoft Monitoring agent, uh, you also need to deploy the dependency agent. This is very easy to deploy. There's no, nothing special about it. It does not require a restart. You just drop on the server and go. It's what actually performs a lot of the workflows to collect the data and draw the map data, which then passes it off to the Log Analytics agent, which passes it up to Log Analytics. 
So as far as adding the solution, there's a couple different ways to add it today. If you are inside your OMS workspace, if you're inside Log Analytics, you can go into the Solutions Gallery and simply click on the Insight and Analytics Solution Offer. Now again, this is that package that contains multiple solutions all wrapped up together. It just basically enables them all together. Uh, the thing to note with this, if you are not in East US or West Europe and you go into the Solution Offer, Service Map won't be there. Again, at this point in time of recording, it's only supported in East Europe or East US and West Europe. Another way to do it, you, if uh, into the Solutions Gallery, you can select it specifically by just clicking on the Service Map Preview tile and hitting Add. Additionally, if you uh, want to add it via ARM templates or via uh, the Azure Marketplace, you can do that. It is available in that way. Uh, for the Marketplace, we just do a search for Service Map Preview. It'll pop up. Just go through the quick one page form to select which workspace to apply it to, and it'll apply it to the workspace and enable it. Finally, other prerequisite, installing the dependency agent. Uh, very straightforward to set up. You can download the agent from the Azure portal inside your workspace. You can see in the screenshot here, if you have your workspace selected, head down to the service map uh, option under general, and this link under service map agent will be a link to the Microsoft Dependency Agent. So that's basically the setup. Now we're going to do the fun stuff. We're going to dive in, take a look at the uh, solution itself, navigate through it, and we're going to run through a, a demo of how we can use this in our environment. So I'm going to tab over to my Log Analytics workspace here. I'm going to bring up one bit down here as well. All right. Okay, I'm going to get my screen in the right place eventually. So, for those who have not watched our previous videos, this is the main page of Log Analytics. What we're looking at here is that every solution that we add to Log Analytics drops basically a tile into our main dashboard. And this tile, these tiles give us quick access to some high-level information relevant to that solution. Additionally, if we add custom views in here, those show up as a tile. Any of these tiles we can click into to dive into more detailed information into the main dashboard of that solution or that custom view and whatever capabilities are in that solution from there. So for this, we're going to dive into the service map solution right here. We can see right off the bat, it's telling us we have 11 machines enabled for service map and they're reporting in the last 10 minutes. All time, we have 13 machines, eight windows, five Linux. So, Quick access just to know how many servers are actually talking. When we dive in, we get a neat little layout based on the, the two servers that we have enabled on, that we have selected. We can see which TCP enabled processes are have been discovered on that server. And then we start to see connections between those servers to other components, what they're talking to over which port, et cetera. We can see different colors based on issues. We can also get a lot of information about the selected computer off to the side. So for the purposes of our demo, let's assume I'm a web server admin for Acme Company. And I got a notification, I'm sitting around at my desk waiting for work because you know the life of an IT person, we just sit around all day, obviously. But uh, sadly, somebody has sent me an email and told me that the Acme customer portal application is having some performance issues. Uh, they said that the issue started around 3 a.m. this morning. So one of the cool things that we can do in Service Map is that this isn't, we, when we pull it up, it's the most recent data, but if we want to look at a previous time range, it's very easy to do. Because I'm being told the issues happened this morning around 3 a.m., I want to adjust my time frame in order to see 3 a.m. this morning. I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the start end date here. I'll just set it from 2.30, set to 12.30, to 3.30 this morning. Well, that's actually Pacific time, my bad. So instead of 2.30, I'm in central time, two hour offset. So I'm gonna say uh, around 4.30, I'll set this to uh, three to 6.30. And I may change this in a bit. We'll just give a nice start right there. All right, so 
instead of, as I've been told that the issue started this morning, 3 a.m. Pacific, 5 a.m. Central, instead of jumping around looking at a list of alerts, I can use this portal here to get a live view of my systems, starting with the web tier that I own. So with Service Map, I can get a list of all systems in our environment that we have this enabled on, and get automatic discovery of all those dependencies for those systems. So I'm going to look at the web front end server here. This is one of my web servers in the environment. As you can see, our Acme app pool website is running here, along with a number of back end dependencies. When I click on that process, you see that it highlights that connection out to port 443 and this list of servers. That's telling me that this is the port that people are connecting, that that, that application is using for TCP connections out to the environment. And we can, from here, expand this out to see what those 14 servers actually are that we're connecting to, or that are connecting to it. So some of them we only have IP addresses for, some of them we have other resource information. It depends on whether those servers are also being monitored and what information is able to be resolved by that resource. Uh, in this case, we've got a whole lot of information there. And we can always click in here to load the map for that object and look at more information. Note that we also are seeing the other connections made by the other services on the server to those devices as well. So let's go over to our Acme Tomcat server, which is where the issue was at. Now, this is the server that is actually hosting the web application that we were getting errors about. So we got that feedback. The errors started happening this morning around 3 a.m. Pacific, 5 a.m. Central. So we're going to adjust the time range now. Uh, we're going to set this from 5 a.m. out to 5.30 just to give us a nice half hour of data. See if we can determine the issue in that time period. So, got a little error there. Don't know where that's from, but for right now, we can see that five five. Did I not type that? There we go. My bad. Loading the map data. All right. So here we are at 5 o'clock this morning, across that half hour period. Right away, we can see that this is red. We've got a lot of other information we're seeing here, too. We can see that we've got alerts on this server in its time range. We also have some changes being made. So as we navigate through the information available to us in Service Map, in the Summary tab here, we can see the fully qualified domain name, what operation is on, and we can pull up more properties about that server. Give us quick information about what we're looking at. Additionally, on the summary tab, we get a quick look at the other main things that's going on. How many dependencies a server has, what's relying on it, what it's relying on. A summary of how many connections are happening, summary of any alerts. We can also scroll down for changes, secure, noticeable security issues, update changes, CPU utilization, memory utilization, all the fun data you want to see right there as we navigate through. And this is all being pulled from our log analytics data, all the information that we're pulling into log analytics. This is collating uh, that information, not collating, putting alongside that information with the information we're getting in Service Map so we can see that one pane of glass, all the information we need. So right away, we can see inside this time period, we've got not just some alerts up there, but our CPU utilization is hitting up to 100% during this time period. We're also getting a lot of memory usage and a lot of network data being sent. So let's take a look at the alerts. If we click on that alert icon, it'll flip right over to the alerts page here. And we can see several alerts came out during this time range for this server. They're all high CPU, actually. If we expand on that, we can see that um, here's the actual query that was run to generate that alert during that time period. We can see that, uh, as we talked about in our last video, we talked about making queries for performance counters. So we, this should look familiar. We can see that it's doing the percent processor time counter name, processor object, total instance, and it's measuring the average value over a one-minute aggregation. 
And the threshold for that is set trigger to alert if the that uh, value returned by that query is greater than 90. If you want to look at that query, we can go into log search straight from here to investigate directly. So let's look at a bit more information. We can load the server map from here. And that comes back to our full information. We can see that we've got several connections all over the place. Actually, I think I bounced around the demo in a weird spot. This is just fine. So what we can see when we drill into this is that this backup Perl process here is a little bit questionable. Let's navigate through a bit more. Let's go to performance off the side with the server again. As we navigate through performance here, as we can see this red line shows a failed connection to this server, wherever that one is. If we go to the server map on that, we're going to be able to find out what that one is. We may or may not have data on that server. But we can already tell that the issue might be with our Acme Tomcat server, where those alerts are firing off. So here's a server map for the connected server, information we have about it, and what it's talking to. I'm going to go back to our Acme Tomcat server. Having a little bit of slowness in the, the portal right now, so forgive me. This is not responding currently. Okay, that's fun. Always love it when things freeze during a demo. Let me start back at the beginning and walk back in there and see if we can get that to load. It's not like this video is being posted on YouTube or anything. Gotta love a good demo. Okay, everything's responding again. Perhaps we can continue on. So where we're at, we were investigating the issues that we're experiencing on our web app, which brought us to our Acme Tomcat server, which we could see was having some CPU issues. Now that we're getting back into it, we'll hop over to the performance view on the side here in the service map solution and see what performance data we're collecting for that machine during this time range. This time range actually got reset Back, so I'm going to return this to the time range we had set earlier, the 5 a.m. to 5.30. I'll just set this here. Still loading some. Don't know why it's suddenly having some slowness issues. I apologize about that, but here we go. All right. So we can look at this and see that during this time range, we have some major CPU spikes happening, usually keeping low, and then there's these repeated huge jumps. Same for memory. At similar time to when those CPU spikes are happening, we're seeing the memory jump up. And we're seeing a lot of network stuff, but that doesn't actually look that different from usual. We can scroll through again and see which processes that receive bytes over the network, sent bytes network. Ruby's talking a lot. Also our log analytics agent. But nothing seems cr too crazy down there. It looks like the main problems are the CPU and memory spikes. So going further through, let's go back to summary and see what else we can find out. 
we're going to get a summary here of our failed connections, of our critical alerts. Additionally, though, we can see this change was made. We can see that a file was added in this time period. So let's take a look at that. There's an OMS admin configuration file created. Now that is actually not the uh, not the the change I'm looking for for my demo here. Um, that's always fun. Let's see if we can hunt around some and see where that change is because it's supposed to be in that time period. That's when I have it configured to happen. Well, I'm not finding it quickly right now, so let's just go ahead and just do a search on changes for the machine across any time range and see if something may have happened on this machine in general recently that may be affecting our program. So from changes, I'm going to look in log search just to link in here, but I'm going to make some modifications to this. So we're looking at configured, this is put up the specific configuration change. I'm going to change this to computer name equals Acme Tomcat, actually it's just computer, not computer name. We can see all the changes that have happened for that server in general. We can see we got records on four different changes in the environment, all related to the OMS config. Okay, this demo is failing miserably because there's supposed to be a change that shows that backup Perl process being added, which would be illustrating that, hey, Log Analytics has captured that data and shown us that there's a problem on the server. The, this process has been added. We don't know very many backup processes written in Perl. This would be suspicious, something that is happening right alongside the uh, CPU bumps, something we want to investigate. Um, unfortunately, that change is not coming up right now, so that's fun. But Either way, we can still look through and see the benefit that we're getting from this, being able to see the connections between servers, being able to see that we have failed connections happening on that process, and being able to see the overview health of that server as we go. Other things we can see from within the solution And go back to the computer level. We can look at the quick information about security for that, that server. Note that we're not getting very much security information for the Linux machine here. If I were to hop over to one of our Windows machines, we'll probably see a bit more. Apparently, there's no security alerts for this server. We can see updates that have been applied, though. We can see, again, changes that have been made to it, and we can get quick access to how many log events we're collecting from that machine. So we can correlate all that data in one place and see the connections and bounds between them to determine what's happening in the environment. So in this, despite the fact that my demo has failed, failed right now to pull up the actual process I'm looking for, we can still do some other searching on it. So if we were to hop over to log search, if we wanted to do a, a check to see what the performance being used of different processes on that server were. Let's come in here and do a quick search. I've got a saint search over here for top five CPU processes by CPU for that server. This is just another query I've saved. We could always change this to any other server name or even remove the computer and see all of them in the environment. But what this is showing us is pulling up all records for the processes that we have discovered on that computer and seeing which ones are the ones using the most CPU. Look at this table right now. Right now we have uh, no real aggregation. Well, we've got a one minute aggregation happening. So we got lots of lines in here. I'm going to change this time range down to six hours just to give us a bit uh, less huge jumps. But what we're going to see is that the other, top, the other four processes in the top five are going to have very low lines. Actually, I'm going to change this top four to drop one of the processes out that I know is having a uh, 
name and compatibility issue. Once this loads up, we'll see that that backup process from the backup.pl process here is the one using a lot of CPU across this time range while everything else is staying pretty low. So we can see right away that since this process was added, it's eating up that server. What we can tell from that is that this is probably the process that's causing the issues that we were reported about to about on that server. Because somebody's added this process, because it's doing who knows what on that server, that server is not behaving as well. We have come across that it might be a malicious process. We might want to reach out to the server owner and move that process and get everything squared away. So in summary, Service Map can help us see the entire application from end to end, even if you don't know which servers are in your app, because it's going to be dynamically mapping those connections. We can leverage those connections and leverage the other data collected by Log Analytics to correlate information and trace through our environment to find issues and come down to identify what might be actually causing the problem in the environment. So hopefully that was useful to give you an introduction to what Service Map does, how it works, how we can use it, and how we can use it to investigate issues. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the, in the comments below or shoot us an email at Model Technology. Uh, again, I'm Gabriel Taylor, Model Technology Solutions. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.